former Naughty Dog developer who worked on the Uncharted and Last of Us games has said that it was short-sighted, extremely short-sighted for Sony to shut down Concord developer Firewalk Studios. Roll this up over at thatparkplace.com. You can find a link in the description below. You can also find a link to become a member of the channel and help support me in what I am doing here. Uh, this Naughty Dog developer is Bruce Straley. He was the uh, game director on The Last of Us and Uncharted 4 at Thief's End. And uh, he says Sony is being extremely short-sighted. Uh, he has a series of posts uh, explaining his decision and even responding to a number of people to provide more detail on it. But before we get to that, obviously, just to recap here, Sony did shut down Firewalk Studios. It was announced in a post to its website with PlayStation Studios head Herman Holtz writing this. As part of our ongoing efforts to strengthen Sony Interactive Entertainment's studio business, we have had to made we have, we have had to make a difficult decision relating to two of our studios, Neon Koi and Firewalk Studios. Specifically speaking to Firewalk Studios, he said this. Regarding Firewalk, as announced in early September, an important update on Concord, certain aspects of Concord were exceptional, but others did not land with enough players, and as a result, we took the game offline. We have spent considerable time these past few months exploring all our options. After much thought, we have determined the best path forward is to permanently sunset the game and close the studio. I want to thank all of Firewalk for their craftsmanship, creative spirit, and dedication. He then added, the PvP first-person shooter genre is a competitive space that's continuously evolving, and unfortunately, we did not hit our targets with this title. We will take the lessons learned from Concord and continue to advance our live service capabilities to deliver future growth in this area. I know none of this is easy news to hear, particularly with colleagues and friends departing Sony Interactive Entertainment. Both decisions were given serious thought, and ultimately, we feel they are the right ones to strengthen the organization. Neon Koi and Firewalk are home to many talented individuals. And we will work to find placement for some of those impacted within our global community of studios where possible. He then concluded saying, I'm a big believer in the benefits of embracing creative experimentation and developing new IP. However, growing through sustainable financials, especially in a challenged economic environment, is critical. While today is a difficult day, there is much to look forward to in the months ahead from the studio business group and our teams. I remain confident that we're building a resilient and capable organization driven by creating unforgettable entertainment experiences for our players. So just a bunch of PR talk there at the end, corporate talk. And obviously, they shut down Concord less than two weeks after the game was released with uh, the game director, Ryan Ellis, uh, writing at the time, saying, at this time, we've decided to take the game offline beginning September 6, 2024, and explore options, including those that will reach our players. While we, term while we determine the best path ahead, Concord sales will cease immediately, and we'll begin to offer a full refund of for all gamers who have purchased the game for PlayStation 5 or PC. If you purchase the game for PlayStation 5 from the PlayStation Store or PlayStation Direct, a refund will be issued back to your original payment method. So that just kind of gives you a recap of uh, what happened there with Firewall getting shut down and then obviously uh, Concord being shut down uh, beforehand. So this is what Straley had to say. He posted this on X. He says, I think it's extremely short-sighted and irresponsible to let Firewalk Studios or any studio that shipped the game go. The work it takes to build a team, tools, culture, IP, and ship a game is invaluable and severely underestimated when the finance department is driving decisions. Uh, he would he would follow that up saying, uh, I understand the financial, or excuse me, sorry. He followed up saying, love the discourse and perspectives. Too many thoughts to follow up here. But as a person building a new studio, new IP, a new team and tools to get a game out and coming from a legacy studio like Naughty Dog with years of tools and talents. It's just hard for me to endorse a full closure. I understand the financial risk and branding issues. I do not think those issues are unsolvable. The experience this team has now is invaluable. Uncharted 2 would not have been what it was had Uncharted 1 not missed the mark. It can be good for a team to have something to prove. So obviously he is looking at this from the outside in. Uh, and he's trying to make a comparison to his experiences when he was at Naughty Dog working on the Uncharted franchise. And uh, he actually kind of makes that very clear when he responds to some of these people where he where he makes where he says that, hey, like we wouldn't have had Uncharted 2 if Uncharted 1 didn't miss the mark and we weren't challenged to make a better game. Uh, and so but they kept Naughty Dog kept the team together and we were able to make that second game. 
and obviously created a breakout success with the Uncharted franchise moving forward. So I think that's kind of where his perspective is coming from. I think uh, I don't think he has the full picture here. Uh, everything we're hearing from inside Firewalk is the team was an absolute disaster. It had fully embraced woke ideology. There was an individual there that was demanding employees uh, call her doctor or something like that. Just utterly ridiculous. It sounded like it was a very toxic culture to work there. Uh, so probably Sony did indeed make the right decision to shut this team down because, sure, they might have been able to, to put a team together, uh, but it doesn't look like that team uh, was... Uh, <laughs> doesn't look like that team was actually trying to make a game. I, as we've seen in uh, in a lot of cases now, these people aren't about making games. They're about making political lectures. They're about making humiliation rituals disguised as games. And that's exactly what I think Concord was. Obviously, we saw that in the character designs. We saw that in the pronouns they had included on the characters. And then obviously, we saw that they had actually uh, contacted, contracted someone who claims to be uh, a woman who is a man and uh, basically inserted that person into the game as the Boz character. And you just know all of those uh, little cinematic vignettes that they promised that they were going to have were going to be full of lecturing on the level, I think, of Dragon Age, the Veil Guard. So I think Sony was not short-sighted. Uh, I think they uh, examined what was happening here saw what was happening in the world around them, realized that uh, there was nothing salvageable and shut it down and shut it down uh, pretty quickly here. But anyways, let's go on to some of these other comments that Straley made here. We have this guy here, Dempsey Rush, said they wasted $3 million on a game that died on launch and had all copies refunded. It's hard to sell to anyone with a board of directors to let that division continue after such a disastrous first outing in a way that doesn't get them fired as well. Remember, it's not even just 300 million. The rumors are they spent 400 million and that, and that was just with production. Doesn't even include what Sony paid for Firewalk when they purchased it from probably Monsters. Obviously, unclear exactly what that was because it, it, from everything we've seen, they had a very close working relationship with probably Monsters from the very get-go with this game. And Shirley responded that spare point, but it's an easy out that undermines your investment and long-term portfolio. It also erodes trust with the publishers, uh, Microsoft or Sony, other dev relationships. Pretty sure other studios are feeling the pressure now. And it's super hard to be creative with an ax over your head. So I'm not sure how it erodes trust with uh, uh, publishers, other dev relationships. Um, I mean, maybe the people at Bungie or, or whoever else that Sony owns sees this and there's like, well, that could happen to us too, potentially. Uh, but I'm not sure how that erodes trust. It just says like, you better perform. You better be at, working at the top of your game or you're, you might not last uh, because you have to create something that is actually going to market. Uh, so I'm not really sure uh, what exactly he is saying here. Doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I think it would actually... Uh, inspire people maybe to either uh, work harder or you're going to find people who uh, aren't going to be able to perform under that. And uh, maybe it's time to find people who will. And uh, that could be uh, something. And that's something that I think we dearly need in video games. Enough of the uh, DEI unmeritless employees that work at these companies. We need to get back to merit-based. And we see that they do have these DI policies, Activision, Microsoft, Sony, they all have it. It's all on their websites, Ubisoft, et cetera. You can find their diversity and inclusion pages. And uh, they all, a lot of times, they actually literally have uh, programs that make it clear that they are discriminating in their hiring practices. So uh, this, this argument here doesn't uh, really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, other studios are feeling the pressure now, and it's super hard to be creative with an axe overhead. I 100% disagree with this. Uh, this whole idea that you can't be creative with an axe over your head or you can't be creative within boundaries is just utterly ridiculous. I actually think it causes people to be more creative because they find solutions to uh, to figure to, to they find better things to do within the boundaries that they're given. They find unique solutions. They get more creative. Uh, I, I just think this is just it's bogus and he's just trying to uh, to cope here. Uh, this other person here wrote, yep, at least give it more than two weeks. Geez, lesser games had at least a year to find their audience. Adapting is what live services do. Fortnite wasn't built in two weeks. At the very least, salvage the team by giving them The Last of Us online. Two birds, one stone, such a waste of talent, in my opinion. 
Uh, Straley says it's a waste of infrastructure and talent. To know if Concord needed more time, it might be a flop, and that's okay. The team has learned invaluable lessons no one else can theorize or talk about. The experience they now collectively have is the investment. So that's under the assumption that they actually learned lessons. I don't think they did. I mean, we have these people saying that critics of the game were talentless freaks. A lot of the people that were public facing were clearly uh, political ideologues rather than video game developers. They might have been video game developers at one point, but they had clearly morphed into uh, political ideologues. And I think we were we were seeing that in the actual game in the quote game that they were creating. Remember, I think it is a uh, I think it was a political lecture and a humiliation ritual uh, posing as a video game. So uh, I don't think that they he's operating under the assumption that they learned lessons and. Uh, I think that is, an, I don't think that is safe to assume. Uh, I'm not sure if they actually did learn any lessons. Everything we're seeing is that it was so, it was just epic that we actually launched the game. Uh, they weren't seemingly reflecting on what they had done and why it failed. And I mean, this game completely and utterly failed. I mean, it didn't even get over 700 concurrent players on Steam. I mean, it was total, total disaster uh, of this for this game. Uh, this other person wrote this, Diablo here. I agree with this. As a PlayStation fan, I found the closure especially disappointing. Concord's gameplay was great. I don't know why they couldn't give uh, Firewalk another chance. Could have gone, could have gave them a dormant Sony FPS IP like Resistance, Killzone, or SOCOM. Heck, they could have uh, even given them Warhawk. Uh, Straley said, I'm not in board meetings and don't have insight into uh, to what happens behind closed doors, but it appears to me that our industry is being driven by fear and quarterly earnings reports at the moment. Who is going to be the vision holder for long long-term portfolio growth? Uh, so this is absolutely a bunch of crap. The only reason why Concord was probably greenlit in the first place or why Sony even bought it is because they were trying to push the woke agenda, in my opinion. Uh, and that is clearly based on fear. So he's right in that sense, but not uh, really, that's not really what he's talking about, right? He's talking about financial fear. And uh, and obviously, he makes that clear when he says that quarterly earnings reports, uh, not anything to do with the woke DEI agenda that Sony is clearly pushing across its portfolio. So uh, he just does not seem to want to address that. And, and, and that's the problem that we see with a lot of these uh, video game developers. They just want to, uh, they're like the monkey, right? Eyes closed, ears closed, <laughs> mouth closed. Uh, they just don't want to actually see what's 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 happening around them, and they want to just completely ignore it. Oh, we, he. We had this other person here, exuberant one, wrote this. I agree, Bruce. They should have swapped out leadership. Since let's be honest, bad companies have bad leaders. However, sometimes those bad leaders hire a horrible team and culture. So I actually agree with this guy. Uh, they clearly had bad leadership, and. Uh, uh, sometimes even 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 decent leaders hire bad people, right? Although I would say that some, uh, a good leader is someone who hires good people. Anyways, uh, uh, Shirley said this, I don't put 100% of the blame on the leadership of Firewalk. They were able to build a team, build an IP, sell a studio, and keep the lights on for several years and ship an extremely complicated piece of tech. That's not nothing. Respect. I mean, this is the cope that the uh, character lead character designer John Wisniewski was was posting. And that's all this is. This is just cope. Uh, how many games have been shipped uh, since Concord? I mean, people ship games. Like I, it's just sure it's an accomplishment, but lots of other people are accomplishing it as well. And there's lots of single dev uh, people that are uh, creating really high quality games as well. So this this just reads like cope to me. Uh, we got Saladin here. He says, how can Sony give so much money to a studio that has accomplished, created nothing? Sony has said in the end that people at Firewalk Studios are talented devs. I surely doubt that. So there you go. Uh, kind of questioning the assumption about their talents uh, from uh, Saladin here. And Shirley says, you doubt they're talented? That's a ridiculous statement. The game might not have been unique and the strategy to enter a saturated market on console for $40, no, le no less, is not ideal. But objectively, the quality and talent of the team is clear to see. Give the devs some credit, man. So I think probably the gameplay with the shooting and stuff, it looks like a lot of other shooters out there. It didn't look uh, groundbreaking or anything like that. So uh, I I don't know, like what what is considered talent, like that you were able to basically create a similar product to something else that was already out there uh, and you were able to, to, to finish it. Is that, does that mean you're talented? 
I mean, the character designs are absolutely atrocious. You see multiple people redesigning them, making them all look a lot better, creating their own designs that look a lot better in the same kind of style. So I'm not really sure uh, if I buy this either. And then we got this one here. Tristan says, on the other hand, it's extremely short-sighted and irresponsible for a studio to be given trust, a big budget, and the freedom to make a game, and you fail to manage your budget and communicate your problems. This is a business and not a charity. Sure. And Shirley says, sure. The difference is I don't think the studio should be punished for bad decisions their investors made. Well, that's not what he's saying. He's saying that the bad decisions were made by the development company with the character designs, with all the other things. And so then he's completely deflecting here and saying that those are made by investors. Well, no, the investors aren't making the decisions to make the game. They thought they were going to get a return on investment. Because they they actually put their trust in, in the people at Firewalk. And they got burned. They got burned really bad. I'm not just referring to Firewalk. I'm referring to the way the industry is being run at large. Jim Ryan made mistakes. That gives them the right to shut a studio down. Well, yes, they bought the company and they shut it down because they own it. Like, I mean, what is it? I, this guy is, I, I think he's completely lost the plot here at this point. He's, he's making nonsensical uh, statements here. He's not even addressing the point that's being made. And this is all a cope to me. I think this is an idea. I think he is trying to defend this from a quote unquote business perspective, but it, it look, it re, it's all just, I think it's all just ideological. I think that's where he's actually coming from. Should have fired only art, the art directors and consultants, managers that are clueless from game design and game art. And then uh, Shirley said this, design is correct, correctable and iterative. Art is malleable. Team culture, communication, and tools are invaluable. Well, from all we've seen, like I said, the team wasn't that great. The culture was all about po positive toxicity. So that's not invaluable. And we got this right here. Their brand became toxic. Any game they work on next would be fairly or unfairly tied to Concord. At best, they would need an under-the-radar rebranding. Rebrand, re Not sure you can put 100 to 200 million into the hopes that gamers don't have a long memory. Hard to do in this climate. And Shirley says, I disagree, but to your point, rebranding is easy and good games speak for themselves. Teams are harder to build than games. And an experienced team is the value of a company. And I, I actually do agree with that. I mean, that's kind of something I've been talking about is you do have these companies now where they are just kind of the name only. They don't have the actual talented labor that was there uh, to be to begin with that built up the brands that you know. And, and that's why you see these games that they churn out and they're not living up to the standards of the previous games because the people that worked on those previous games aren't even working on, on the, the current games now. It's a completely different crop of people. So I do agree with this, that the an experienced team is the value of a company, but I disagree with the fact that his assumption that Firewalk Studios had a experienced team. And they learned the right lessons. And they were going to be motivated to do something better. I think those are all massive assumptions that he is making. And they're based off of his experience at Naughty Dog with Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2. And then obviously moving on into with Uncharted 3, Uncharted 4, etc. In the last of us but i think this is just giant cope it's full of assumptions and i think he's just trying to defend this game defend uh the people at firewalk studios and he's doing it because the game is ultra woke uh, and i think that's really where this is coming from because if the game isn't ultra woke i just don't see him commenting on this i mean he's not commenting on all the other layoffs that have been happening he's just talking about firewalk He's not talking about uh, Neon Koi getting shut down, right? That Sony shut down. It's just Firewalk because of Concord. But those are my thoughts. Let me know what you guys make of this. Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you think of what Bruce Shraley had to say here. Remember to always be charitable, especially to each other, but to always speak the truth.